Hello everyone. Welcome back to Android Material Designing Tutorial Series. I'm Annie from Smarter. In this tutorial, we will be learning the toolbar in detail. We will be learning about the different types of toolbar. How to implement the toolbar in our application using the XML file, using the Java codes and maintaining the compatibility of our application with the toolbar in different Android devices. So let's begin. Now before introducing ourselves to toolbar, let us talk a little detail about the action bar. The Android action bar was introduced to maintain a consistent navigation across the application. That is to make the navigation across the various views and activities in our application easier. Adding widgets to the action bar made use of the important function easier. It also helped in prioritizing important actions. Now let us talk about the toolbar. Toolbar also does the same. It is used to give our application an identity. We can give the application title in the toolbar. It helps the user to indicate his location in the Android application. Because there is a title in the toolbar, we can change the title according to the change in the activity and location of the user in the application. Same as the action bar, toolbar is also used to assess to important functions and actions in our application. We can provide different icons like the menu icon or the overflow menu which can be used as shortcut to perform various actions. It also provides support for easy view switching. That is the navigation icon can be used to move back from one activity to the other. We can show multiple toolbar on the screen. The toolbar can be placed anywhere in the Android screen. Maybe at the top, at the bottom, at the middle. So there may be more than one toolbar in our Android application. Now moving forward, let us learn about the toolbar in little more detail with a pictorial representation. In this image shown on the left side of the screen, this is the toolbar. In this toolbar, there is a navigation icon on the top left. Below it, there is an image view. And beside the image view, there is a title and the subtitle. This toolbar in this image is a big toolbar. The size of the toolbar can be customized according to the need of the application. But it has to follow the Google standards. Looking at another image, in this image, the toolbar is a small one. We can see there is a navigation icon, a title and a search icon. So it is not necessary that we have a subtitle or the image view always on our toolbar. This toolbar is small in size, but it has been designed according to the Google standards. There is another image for the toolbar. In this toolbar on the top right corner we can see there is an overflow menu but on the first image which we had seen there was no overflow menu. Besides that it is same as the first image for the toolbar. There is a navigation icon, there is an image view, the title and the subtitle. So guys this shows that we can customize our toolbar according to our need and according to the necessity. We can add more than one icon as the shortcut in our toolbar or there may not be even one icon in the toolbar. Let us go through few more characteristics of the toolbar. The toolbar is compatible for API level 7 and above. Now guys let me tell you the toolbar was introduced with the Android material design support that was introduced for API level 21 and above. That is for the devices with lollipop version and the above version. Before the toolbar was introduced, we used action bar as the app bar in our application. Hence, the toolbar is compatible for API level 7 and above. It is because we can use toolbar as action bar too. It is similar to action bar. We have already discussed about its features that are same as the action bar. To use toolbar as action bar for devices with API level below 21, we need few methods to implement it. That is set support action bar and set action bar. The set support action bar method provides the backward compatibility for our Android application. Whereas set action bar can also be used to use toolbar as action bar. Now guys, 
Another important feature about the toolbar is that it is a view group. Now what is a view group? View group can have its own layout and can be placed anywhere on the screen. There may be multiple views within the view group. It has its own layout and there may be custom layouts inside the view group. It can be placed anywhere on the screen. The view group contains custom views. There may be multiple views as the child view. In this image on the left side, we can see there is a navigation icon on the top and the title and the subtitle are having the vertical linear layout. Similarly, we can have the relative layout in our toolbar and place the desired icons as per our need and as per our requirement. Now, the contents of the toolbar have predefined places. The toolbar may contain a title. On the left side, in the image, we can see there is a title in the toolbar. There may be a subtitle in the toolbar, but it is not a compulsion to have the subtitle. If you need it, you put it. There may be the menu icons or there may not be the menu icon. There may be one menu icon, two or three as per the need. On the left side, we have two menu icons for the save and the settings. Instead of these two icons, we may have the refresh icon, the delete icon, the search icon and many more. There may be overflow menu in the toolbar. The overflow menu contains a list of items which when clicked perform the actions as defined in the application. In the toolbar, there may also be a navigation icon. We can see in this image, there is a navigation icon on the left side of the toolbar. This navigation icon may be a back button, a refresh button or anything as you define. Now in this image, we can see guys, there is only one menu icon that is the refresh icon and there is an overflow menu. So guys, we discussed that toolbar is compatible with the API level 7 and above. Now, for devices with API version below 21, the material design is not supported. Hence, we need to use the toolbar as action bar. Whereas, for the API level 21 and above, toolbar can be used. Hence, the toolbar can be categorized into standalone toolbar and toolbar as action bar. We will be proceeding with the standalone toolbar and after that we will be learning about implementing the toolbar as action bar. When the toolbar is implemented as standalone toolbar, the toolbar can be used as independent view group. That is, we can define the properties and attributes of the toolbar independently. Whereas, when the toolbar is used as action bar, all properties of the action bar is applied to the toolbar. That is, we need to apply the property to the toolbar via action bar. So guys, that's all for this video. In the upcoming video, we will be learning about implementation of the standalone toolbar using the Java codes. We will also be learning about maintaining the compatibility of the toolbar for all Android devices, customizing the toolbar and many more details. Thank you friends for watching my video. If you like it, hit like, share and do comment below the video. Take care and have a good day.